Unauthorized opinions expressed on the internet would be censored. We are live. We are live. This is real. <laughs> Welcome back to Unauthorized Opinions, uopod.com. Like, share, subscribe. It's pure propaganda and it's super cringe, by the way. I literally went to the polls with nothing in mind. I saw a can of orange soda in the parking lot. <laughs> and it's I was like, yeah, there we go. An unopened can of orange soda just chilling <laughs> in the parking lot. I was like, yeah, I got to vote for Trump, dude. Your podcast sucks it's mental mate it's absolutely mental i'll be honest i thought it was kind of offensive when you talk so much about the loch ness monster political climate and andrew treat yourself okay especially if you start i don't know getting getting in good with homeless people unauthorized opinions streaming everywhere at uopod.com doodly <laughs> doo <laughs> To unauthorized opinions. I can hear myself a lot. We are here with dun, 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 Lewis Brackpool <laughs> in the candy painted room. The trans room. Trans room. One thing yeah. that you can't say in England, obviously. No, you can't. You can't. How was your flight? How was Awful. Your, your time getting here? How long did it take you to get here? In total, I think you're looking at around 14, 15 hours. So, yeah, quite a long Quite a long journey. wasn't too bad. Got a few naps in. Listened to some Fellowship of the Ring on the old Audible. On the, I was listening to Lord of the Rings. You haven't heard Lord of the Rings? You needed it read to you. You've seen the movie, obviously extended. But you know, I wanted to. uh, I wanted to listen to the Audible because I haven't read the books (laughs) properly. So I listened to a bit of that. Bit of a bit of house music that numbed my mind for the. (laughs) <laughs> for the eight hour flight and then stop over at Montreal where people insisted that I have to speak French instead of English, mm-hmm. which was a bit weird. It's weird so, I'm looking left on here, but I'm actually looking at you. I should just, <laughs> I should just pretend to look at you like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so just look at the camera like a freak, I guess. We've got a lot to get to. Well, not a lot. we got some serious stuff and we've got some fun stuff. If people remember when Avi and Minnie and you were in... Where Switzerland? Yep. Yep. Davos, Davos. At the W. Davos. I don't know why I'm saying it like a French person, but in Davos, mm-hmm. Avi spoke to a guy named Nos Daly, who's some YouTuber. Uh-huh. You'll never hear, hear of him unless you're some sort of like I don't think anybody probably watched this guy. No. Hearsay, Your Honor, not admissible in court. I don't know for truth, but I don't think anybody ever watches this guy. It's just like he's establishment talking points. Cheesiest YouTuber possible. And Avi talks to this guy about... He was, like, getting sponsorship money from the uh, World Economic Forum, wasn't he? <laughs> it's insane. An insane sort of sponsorship anyway. So, basically, the enemy. <laughs> so, he's doing promotional things, saying how great the World Economic... It's just guys who get... I think he's Arab. Just guys who get together and the... Uh, now he's turning French. But he's basically <laughs> said in those videos that... You know, the World Economic Forum is just a bunch of lovely people who get together to talk about climate change and not a bunch of evil people who decide policy for their countries and mm-hmm. and companies deciding policy together without the input of the people and then implementing it like lockdowns, like digital currency. What yeah. else What else do they talk about in the World Economic Forum? Um, you know, just all the usual stuff, really. <laughs> Wanted to take control, 15-minute cities. That's a big one. If you could look up sometimes for the audience, that'd be great. Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm looking over at you, mate. And, and the ground, for some yeah. reason. Yeah, no, no, I'm thinking. Um, yeah, 15-minute cities, that's a big one. But um, So you put me on to this video, yes. as the English say. Yes. And what's this about? How do you set this up? Okay, so Nas Daily did a video. This is quite relatively old. I think this is 2021. This came out, I believe. Or however many video, how many many years ago? 2020. Oh, 2020. Okay, even even older. Right before lockdown. Just before, and uh, he made a video about how white is London, um, and he's basically well, I'll let the video do the talking, but this is relatively old, but uh, you haven't seen it, so I thought I'd uh, share it with you. If it isn't obvious, I'm not white. I'm brown. And growing up in the Middle East, I thought white people lived in places like London. They do, don't they? Um, well, they're a minority live now. In places like London. Yeah, well, they're a minority now, but yeah. Um. 
But now that I'm a grown up in London, I realized I was wrong. London is not white. Turns out British white people in London are the minority. And the majority? Pakistan, Pakistan. India, France, Senegal. People from all races and colors. This place has 300 languages spoken, a mayor of a Pakistani origin, and an Indian meal of tikka masala, considered by some to be a national dish. National dish? dish? My name is Black Lion, right? Black Lion from Jamaica. Places like London make me happy because. That's really weird. So he yeah. prefaces this by saying how London is not white, even though it is. I grew up thinking these countries were white. They were. And he goes there and he just talks about how non white it is. Yeah. But also at the same time, the, this. this this is so ignorant from so many levels because everyone who's not white is just the same. It's like, we've got a Jamaican guy, we've got Pakistani people, and that's just, all that matters is they're not white. Let's group everyone together that's not white. And then he goes on to say, Lewis, that he loves cities like this. Mm -hmm. Well, it's celebrating the idea that the native population is, is diminishing, which, you know, can you imagine if... You know, we did that to a, a country, let's say, like Nigeria or something, and um, the Nigerian native population was shrinking, and and white British people were there going, and then I sort of went and did a travel tourism video <laughs> uh, about Nigeria and said, "Look at all these white British people in Nigeria. It's fantastic. Look, they they done this, they done that. Like, obviously, people native people from Nigeria are obviously going to." be a bit upset with that be a bit sort of confused by it so yeah celebrating the uh uh the uh the diminishing of um the white british population from the capital city the more colors culture and languages you can fit in a city the more people can call this place home oh! i'm not white but in london i feel at home Mm. This is such a weird thing to care about, though. It's yeah. like, you need to go to another country that's not traditionally white, and you need it to not be white, and to feel at home. Let's go to Japan. Let's go to, like you said, Nigeria, Ethiopia. Celebrate that it's no longer the way that it was. Mm. And that's, you could only say that about white people. And it's also, I find, racist to be like, Let's categorize everybody as white and non-white. Mm -hmm. And their argument, of course, would be like, well, that's how it was for so long. I mean, but also England was the first, the Great Britain was the first people to stop doing that at the mm -hmm. same time. So on, on one hand, you've got blaming the country for not, for not being, you know, diverse enough, but also they were the first people to start being diverse and stop slavery and all these other things. What country is he from? Do we know? Um, Palestine, I believe. I believe mm. he's from Palestine. We'd have to believe Palestine exists then. <laughs> oh, Ooh, getting spicy here. Two big screens. Um, yeah, but like, how would he feel if a Jewish person went to Palestine and said, "Wouldn't it be nice? Isn't it awesome that there isn't a bunch of Palestinian people here? Why does this? Why does the race of the people you're going matter? Like, that's no. the weird thing. Like, why is everybody? Why would you care about that? I don't mm. get it. No, neither do I. Like I say, he's, he's celebrating the idea of um, just, you know, the, the native population becoming a minority. I think that's pretty strange. There's been some other um, commentators, people like that, celebrating that, um, the idea of, um, you know, the, the native population shrinking, which I just find is a bit odd, really. I've always found it a bit strange. Um, but... Hey ho, free speech, I guess. I guess. I guess. If we've even got that anymore. <laughs> you tweeted at some point over yeah. this weekend. Yeah. The last time I visited Canada, let's blow this up a bit. Mm -hmm. No pun intended. The last time I visited Canada was two years ago, and since then I noticed how much mass immigration has significantly increased in Toronto. I barely recognized some of the areas we drove through after checking the statistics. It turns out my observations were accurate mm. so 1952 to 2023 i mean look that's at painful that. yeah that's insane isn't it yeah and a lot of people don't know that this stuff started with 
Justin Trudeau's father, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, he was the first one to say, hey, let's stop focusing on European countries and focus more on... Um, he, you know, he had a deal with some African guy called the Aga Khan where he rescued a bunch of... He took in a bunch of a Muslim African refugees. They ended up building a museum after that guy for some reason. They also give them... Uh, government contracts so he's the one that started it and he didn't just say hey let's even it up let's get people from sweden and norway and ireland and also a bunch of other uh countries he went with let's completely flip it on its head and of course back that would have been you know this chart doesn't even show it how far back that would have been ar around this area and you can see the trend starts exactly and you know people aren't racist we talk to people here all the time that are you know, uh, our black neighbors, um, we know some uh, Dominican, uh -huh. we've got Portuguese, mm -hmm. uh, I know several Italians, um, I, I don't know how many races I'd need to <laughs> name here to not sound racist, but basically everyone in Canada notices this, all of the people who come here notice this, and it's significantly gotten more the case in the last couple of years, where not only is there just a lot of a lot more people here they're all of indian descent to the point where it's 85 percent indian and then you've got white and black people um on a f unable to f afford houses we were driving today lewis and i saw a black family waiting for the bus and i was like i would like it if they could afford a family of four could afford a car but uh, they can't in this economy and people will say canada has to grow canada has to be able to grow its gdp my questions are why who is it for and how does it benefit us? Because if the housing prices are rising and the cost of food is rising and the cost of just general amenities and living a decent life are rising, why do we need more people? They would say the population is declining, so we need to add more people in. But if the population is declining, that's because people here aren't having kids. And why aren't they having kids is the real question that you're supposed to answer as a government for people, not just um, our population isn't having kids, so we have to bring in other people to replace them, as they might say, Lewis. Thoughts on that? Um, the GDP argument has been used quite a lot, I think. Uh, it's used especially for pro-immigration, or pro-mass immigration, I should say, I should preface, uh, in the UK. And it's and statistics are actually showing that, no, it's actually a, a net negative for GDP. Um, especially with, I think we've hit the highest, I think per capita now, the UK has the most illegal migrants um, within the whole of Europe, I believe now. I think per capita, we're the highest. Um, and our GDP is not great <laughs> because guess what? You bring millions of people here illegally and majority of them won't, well, a, a given handouts for a start, um, whether it be business grants, whether it be um, that's best case scenario, really, and that hardly ever happens. Um, free mobile phone, free sort of uh, money, accommodation. There's even videos of guys just sort of throwing um, cash around. Um, it's it's kind of like obviously mockery. But this happens if you happen if that happens continuously. There's no work. There's no. There's nothing. Um, what do you expect? It's it's just such a fa like a fallacy, the GDP argument, and you just hear it over and over again. But the statistics are saying otherwise. So yeah, I hear that, and I say that's the government just wanting to make more money and make sure, sure they get more and more money to spend. But sure. if there's less people, then we probably don't need to make as much money. Mm -hmm. I say that people will do these jobs if the people aren't available. See, we, we've never tried this thing. People, conservatives even, will argue this GDP argument and say that there's people, not enough people want to work here. I think that's bullshit. I think that if you have somebody doing one of these jobs for $20 an hour or whatever it is, they can't find somebody to work for them. Let's mm. just say it's a, it's a grocery store. Then they're going to have to raise wages to appeal to more people. But traditionally, these jobs have been for teenagers and young sure. adults or, you know, divorcees, uni students, a, a, anything that you can think of where a person is willing to do a minimum wage job. Those are for people that have worked yeah. here. Yeah. No ma again, I know I have to preface this as no matter what the race is, because people will say, oh, you're racist. No, it's just in the last few years we've had 
you know, tons of Caribbeans in this country, tons of Chinese people, um, Irish, obviously, lots of Ukrainians before the war. Yeah. Um, I grew up in a city with lots of Ukrainian and Polish people. There's never been any problem. They've never been in en masse like this. So now you've got people at grocery stores, gas stations, and convenience stores, and fast food places that are all Indian immigrants. Right. And they're all hiring only their friends. And everybody will tell you this. Everybody of every race will tell you this in Canada. They're only hiring people that uh, that are of the same racism, and that's actual racism. Right. And at the same time, not a lot of them speak good English. So people are boycotting um, Tim Hortons, like our national export brand of Tim Hortons. And maybe if I turn it like this, Lewis, then it looks like I'm looking at you. Exactly. Let's see. I should have done <laughs> this the whole time. There, People like me don't need to go to Tim Hortons anymore. They're using this temporary workers program to pay lower wages and end up having worse customer service. So I go to a place like McDonald's for my coffee now because the pro- they actually lower prices. Their people, you know, are good workers. They're not just all one race, which is really weird if you think about it. You go if you go to Japan and then everybody who works in fast food is like Chinese, that would be weird. If right. you went to Norway and everybody was East African in a certain industry, that would be weird. And then you go to an entire neighborhood in Sweden and everybody's Belgian or something. That would be weird. Right. And I don't, and everybody has noticed it, but people will still complain. I think, Lewis, though, to wrap that up, we're still about a year away, a year away from even being where England is on this topic. Sure. And where the United States is on this topic, which is somebody holding up mass deportations now so yeah yeah for sure i can well i know that none of your politicians are talking about it for a start and we've just had a a mainstream politician in the uk uh, robert jenrick who said that he wants to deport uh, over a million people illegal um, migrants Um, and that's a surprise Uh, it's (sighs) unbelievable like here's the thing though we've had 14 years of tory rule and mass immigration has only gone up but it's only when nigel farage turned around in a in a recent interview with uh steve edgington who's fantastic at what he does really really great um he put the question to nigel farage about mass deportations and he said i'm not going down that route and we all kind of sat there and went, well, I say we all, majority of us sat there and went, why are you here then? Like, what, what, what's, what's your purpose then? Because that's what, what's what we want. We want lower immigration. We want um, anyone who is illegal that has come into this country illegally um, should be deported. Um, that's just standard. And now we have a Tory, a mainstream Tory leader saying, yes. Um, I would deport over a million people, um, illegal people, people that have broken the law, that have broken into Britain. Um, and obviously, I don't believe it. I don't believe that it's ever going to happen. But my point is, is over here, I've noticed that your politicians won't even talk about it, which is insane. I mean, this has been the national topic. Immigration has been the national topic in our country for quite a long time. Everyone from all sides are just uh, noticing how it's just not being sorted and it's continuously going up, that the boats are still coming from Calais, that people are still um, jumping on lorries or, or you know, wherever to uh, to actually break into to Britain and carry on because they know that they can get a good welfare check, incentives. There's incentives for illegals to carry on coming into Britain. And... You know, the the conversation, the rhetoric has shifted so much within Britain that, even, like I said, a mainstream politician, you cannot get more mainstream than someone who is a, who could potentially be the leader of the Tory party, who are wet liberals <laughs> of Wait, this country. Wait, what, what did you, they are what? Wet liberals. You have to explain that for the non-English Weak. audience. Weak. Okay. Yeah. They're basically weak liberals. They're not conservatives at all. It's the uni party, as people call it, Labour and Conservative. They're the same party because you vote for one, you get the same thing. At the moment, I mean, our government's terrible with Keir Starmer, even worse. But you vote for one, you get the same. 
So yeah, meaning the Euro- the uh, Uni Party. But um, yeah, going back again, I mean, your politicians, even Pierre Polyev, I don't think he's even talking about deporting any illegals, is he? No, not at all. And I wanted to bring up one of his commercials. He's going for the easy stuff, which is smart. And right. I have a friend that says, oh, he's saving it for when he's elected. I would call that a lying. But uh, <laughs> I get why he's not doing it. He talks about building homes. I want to know if they're town homes or freehold standalone homes. And he doesn't talk about deportations. He doesn't talk about immigration at all because he wants their votes. Um, and right. what he talks about now is jobs, building homes. And getting rid of the carbon tax, which is which are all good, but he comes across as a person who's afraid to be mean, which we all know is the thing that makes the world go round right now. Here are his com- one of his commercials. I just want to point out how it's it's weird to see a politician. He's got like five different commercials where he just does like voiceovers, like acting. Like I went to radio school. This takes a lot of practice to be able to do good voiceover work. And he's doing it a lot. He's acting in commercials. Traditionally, you'd see politicians, you know, they have footage of them on a job site or at a campaign rally, and you'd hear a quote from them or something, and then at the end they'd say, I approve this message. His are just all voiceovers and acting. Watch Mm. this. Who is Pierre Polyev? Many know him as the common sense leader the country needs. His school teacher parents know him as the boy they adopted and raised in their modest home in the suburbs of Calgary. His dad knows him as the son he took to early morning hockey games. His neighbors know him as the boy who used to deliver the morning newspaper. His children know him in Francais, Espanol, and English as Papa. And I know him as a guy who loves me for who I am, a Canadian who came to call Canada home, and his wife. So when Pierre says, it doesn't matter who you know or where you're from, but rather who you are and where you're going, these aren't just empty words. He's lived it. Common sense. Let's bring it home. See, that, that's, that's very... All, that's all acting. Yeah, that's... Um, it's trying to... Uh, the thing is with politicians, they're all very, very plastic, aren't they? And they have to act normal in order to sway people into believing they're normal i mean that that's just like a way to try and say i'm relatable i'm a relatable person i do normal things like normal people but really you're acting just act normal just be normal you don't need to act like it (laughs) you are human he hired you know he hired two and i complain about this a lot my friends don't like that i complain about it uh Dave and our other friend that I say he's got uh, two stylists that he he uses and they got him right. to take off his son, his glasses that he wears right. and uh, I think a real man doesn't need a regular guy, regular old guy doesn't exactly need two stylists to tell him to start dr- be acting less like a nerd and then doing the <laughs> commercials that's basically what they did is they tried to make him look hotter macho. yeah exactly I saw the Apple thing as well. A Canadian scurvy case raises questions over food insecurity. So for those who don't know, scurvy is when you don't have any vitamin C, Lewis. It's insane. Uh, Like pirates would get it, people traveling at sea a long time ago. Sure. And that's when they started discovering lemons and that they could have those on the ships and just eat a little bit. A Canadian woman didn't have access to fresh food, study says. Not good. Now, I'm a low socioeconomic status, considered ubiquitous risk risk factor for scurvy. Now, my personal opinion is that's just a person who doesn't want to eat any fruit. (laughs) And uh, That's insane. So I don't necessarily blame, like, the food is there. It's a bit more expensive, but if you are just buying fruit, you can buy fruit. I don't think it's a problem, but I bring this up because there are food banks in Canada that are used by the same um, mass immigration right. that we're seeing. And, you know, food banks are at an all-time low. And this, these are the things that we have to deal with now is... Do you say that they're, they're at a full-time low, meaning stock, or less people using them? Or is more it people more? using them, right. yeah. Right. So it's, it's a big problem. I can pull that up. I don't know if you guys face anything like that. Does food it, uh, banks yeah we there's a lot of people that have to use it now especially with inflation at the minute especially with um 
the way the economy is going and people just can't afford stuff. It's just insane. Absolutely insane. So yeah, it's it's at a bit a, a high as well. I could just Google stuff and find it, but that's like the destiny way of doing things. It is. <laughs> I heard it a is. quote Googling I am correct dot com. Um, <laughs> All the time. Let's move on to more fun stuff. And before we get on to stuff that'll get you arrested, possibly, <laughs> we have been talking about this recently about how old Call of Duty and, you know, SOCOM and other video game lobbies were way, they were the Wild West back in the day when it we was. were younger. Um, and then they started doing, you know, reporting, I think Xbox voice tracking and stuff like that, where if somebody yep. reported you, it would record your last like 20 minutes or whatever it is 15 minutes it's terrible why do you think and the one i've played for our friends and and i'll find that while you're talking was a modern one actually i think i have it saved that's how much i liked it um why do you think it's changed so much our generation was ruthless in online games yep and now it's sort of just like hey how are you doing <laughs> <laughs> um because people are afraid of hurty words is the uh is the kind of well the main point of it uh, our culture has changed western culture has changed so drastically over the past 10 15 years i mean even back when we were like what 15 16 you're in a cod lobby or whatever and people would you just just say the worst things like it was basically like the who it was basically like hooliganism, but for the online sort of realm. And yeah, people people don't like that anymore. I say people don't like that. People love that still. There's so many people who want to get back into the cod lobby like language well, and well, using all of that. But people are because of the culture, because of clampdown, because of government intervention due to activists getting involved with people's speech, you're now seeing... I think people are starting to just think, okay, I've got to tone it down now, or I've got to be really, really careful with what I'm saying online, because now that there is legislation passed across the board, all these countries taken on the same type of legislation, policy, whether it be through misinformation or just hate speech laws, people can go to jail for this stuff now. Just for just, I don't know, being really mean to someone online, or like even if they're having a bit of a scrap, like online, like it takes a, a viewer to say, I don't like what this person says, report them, and that's it, done. Didn't PlayStation Network do a massive thing about um, people acting in this certain way and it would completely ban their account and they can listen in to people's chats that's what i was just saying about xbox yeah same I don't know. yeah i'm sure playstation probably does this i was this... gonna say playstation like it, it actually reports like users to like a server or some sort of stuff and it's like it's really serious i was banned like, from... so so encroaching i was like... banned from playstation once when i was like 17 for talking too much shit on a forum that's right a forum ladies and gentlemen Brilliant. this video will showcase modern I guess children or whomever playing games right. versus how it was. Okay. Yo, what's going on, guys? Not much. Just hopping on for the first time today, so I'm probably going to be absolute garbage. Nah, you'll be good, bro. You'll be good. You having a good time, though? This game mode fun? Get the fuck out! <laughs> so I want to... <laughs> Wait, so that was 2024. The guy's like, if you couldn't hear it too well, um, if you're in your car or something, they're saying, oh, this is my first time in a while. I'm probably going to suck. And then somebody goes... Wow, don't worry about it. You'll probably be good. You'll probably be better than you think. And then this is now, twenty. Uh, what year? The twenty eleven. I think they said. Yeah. <laughs> That's we've all good heard to do the a lot same of bleeping. Guy. We've all heard that same guy though, like not yeah. literally, but the same guy talking. Oh like yeah, that. there's so many more other ones. I think that one was featured in this one. Um, I think we get the gist of it though. <laughs> the Americans love doing that. Like they they really get into it. Or used to get into it. Shoot a gun, dog. Learn how to fucking shoot a gun, you fucking Ryan Shield. Oh, Ryan Shield. I'm a pussy that used Ryan Shield. Oh, I've heard that. They've AI'd that. I'm a pussy that used Ryan Shield. 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 I'm a pussy that used Ryan Sh
That's the same thing. That's the same thing. Tell me what to- oh, You have my no. dick in your ass. <laughs> <laughs> you little fucking prick. Why do you care about the game so much? Exactly. Why do you wanna- Why do you wanna know no. if I have my hey, dick, bro, you fucking bro, homo? Bro, bro, one, go find a girlfriend. You go smoke a crack. This <laughs> one's great. The day- The day that you- Why don't you wanna talk to me? You fucking douchebag. The day- Oh, you get girls. You get girls, you fucking stupid I go to school with- I go to school with this kid, AC Dodge. Ask him, ask him if I get drunk. Okay, I'll ask, like, I'll ask, I'll go somehow ask your buddy if you get girls, okay. you fucking. Ask him. <laughs> so, ask oh him. man, that's great. All right. Yeah, it's good fun, isn't it? All right, so we're the now, good old days. Yeah, we're gonna play a game now called "Would This Get You Arrested in England?" So I'm going to say a bunch. I'm not of looking forward to this. I'm going to. This is obviously, I don't know if we can even release the uncensored version of this, can we? No. No, okay, so we'll be censored. Well, I, d I don't know what you're going to say, no, but I'm going to presume no. Yeah, it's safe to presume no, so unfortunately even Patreon subscribers can't hear it. Um, because literally you'll be arrested, no? So just to preface then, right, just to preface. So in my country, Great Britain, not so great at the minute... <laughs> So just Britain, right, has has the most insane. Just Britain. <laughs> we've dropped the greatness. We, we, we've dropped the great. We've decided to get rid of great, and we're just going with Britain from now on. Just all right, Britain for now, <laughs> right? So, in my country, uh, the they have have the worst hate speech laws I think ever. I've seen. I've seen online like people having visits from the police for posting tweets. Something called non-crime hate incidences is the biggest one where people will post, I don't know, a spicy meme on Facebook, on social media, and receive calls or receive visits from police. Counter-terrorism as well. There's a, a recent case of a... Yeah. Crown Prosecution Service crackdown. In 2017, the CPS launched a crackdown on hate speech online, treating online hate crimes as seriously as street-based offences. The policy update aims to address the mounting number of cases sparked by abuse on social media, covering various forms of hate crime, including religious, racist, uh, disability, homophobic, biphobic, and transphobic abuse. Um... Arrests for online crimes of speech between 2010 and 2013. Arrests for aggressive, threatening or hateful speech on social media declined. However, the numbers rose again in 2016 with, I don't know why I'm laughing. It's like, oh, it died down. Then suddenly it went back up oh, again man. for some weird reason. Um, with 625 arrests made for alleged section 127 offences. Because of Trump. Yes, because of Trump. Right, maybe I should like, cover my mouth. If I go right behind the microphone, I don't know if people will be able to hear what I say or see what I say. Mm. But, um, all right, like this. So essentially, like, and the, the the thing is about this, right? There's one thing. There's one thing, like just being outright hateful. Should someone go to prison for it? I don't think so, personally. I think that's silly. I think if you believe in freedom of speech and expression, like in a high trust society, it would be a community based. You'd sort that out via your community you wouldn't sort it out via the law um that's how i see things is if someone's being mean and nasty to someone you don't just send the bobbies around to uh you know and drag someone through the courts for i don't know posting a horrible thing on facebook that's mental come on like that's silly but um it seems to me that this piece of legislation which dates back to tony blair the communications act of 2003 is being used as a weapon against people to shut people down for even just criticism. And that's now considered hate speech, criticizing people, whether it be criticizing um, gender ideology or religious, anything to do with religious, uh, except if you're Christian, by the way, you can have a pop at Christians all you want. Oh, you, can mock, you can mock Christians to the, till the cows come home, but any other religion, no, you can't do that. No, it's not on. So that's the backstory. Um, you want to rotate? So you're going to get there? me arrested by so saying something. There? By the way, before you we rotate the chair a little bit there, so you're more in it. I don't know. Like that way? Yeah, lean like over that? to your right. 
Oh, you're right. There, there you go. go. So, I want to preface as well. <laughs> uh, I disavow everything this man is going to say uh, because I don't know what he's going to say. But um, I'm going to make a judgment on whether I would be arrested or not if if I was to say this. I'm not going to say it. I don't believe any of this. It's true. To I'm be- prefacing just in case something will happen. To be clear, we have hate speech laws here, but I don't think unless you were just like writing somebody death threats with hate with like slurs in it, I don't think you'd be. Uh, you know, as we discussed earlier today, our countries are. They focus on different areas to be terrible in. You know, ours is uh, mass immigration and, you know. Ours is that as well. Yeah, well, you know, well, we suck right now. Great Britain was never great, mate. It was never it was great. great. It was great. And then. We let the Geordies so- in. <laughs> All right, you ready? I'm ready. All right, so let me uh, <laughs> do that so I can see where I can cover my mouth here. All right, the first statement is, well, right in the camera, please. Um, these our country (laughs) yeah you're going straight to prison for that yeah i can't even i'm sweating at that one you you're bleeping this all out right yeah don't worry uh (laughs) you're going straight to prison for that i think i think we should zimbabwe that one's not as bad Uh, the the abbreviation Mm -hmm. of that of of that that word. word Yeah, because that's considered a slur. Great. So, yeah, that's prison time. <laughs> that's prison time for that one. Um, <laughs> this is so stupid. This I'm going to get right behind the mic for this one like I'm a rapper, so you can't see my I'm mic. actually cringing. Like, I'm that's sweating. Fair. There are way stealing our land. That's pretty tame. That's just a critique, that really. Ste- that's just an opinion. I don't know about that one. I'm undecided. <laughs> oh, we've got an undecided. I'm undecided here. on that. Don't worry. We've got a couple more. It'll be even worse. Right. Um, I better cover my face for this. <laughs> Our children. See, even laughing. I don't know whether I'm going to go to jail for even laughing. It's That's so outright. Because you know somebody out there would be like, this is what he said, bruv. Get him. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, you go. This is a good time to let everybody know that Lewis was on the latest season of Doctor Who. No, it wasn't. The one that was very controversial with the new no. actor. No, it wasn't. Um, when there is a, a a gay bar scene, Lewis is in the background with one of the guys dancing. Um, not to be confused with when he was on Downton Abbey seasons two and three, right? He, do you know, he, this man makes up me being on shows, British Make shows, up. and then people end up searching for it, so it comes up on the the... Uh, if you type in my name, it comes up with the shows because people type it into Google and then he gets a kick out of it. That's why he does this. <laughs> Are you actually... Downton Abbey. That's close enough. No. That's not close enough. It was two years ago, though. I think we had Wait, screenshot. get rid of Downton or the Downt? Twitter, Lewis Bracken, Lewis Bracken Flowers and Johnson. I don't know what that is. No. All right. Let's get back to mean words. Yeah, I turned you off there. Let's get back to the the mean words of it all. All right. Uh, two more to go, I think, here. No, oh, that was right. the second last one. We got one more. No, two more. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Uh, schools are trying to teach kids. <laughs> yeah, you got in prison. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, like I keep saying, the abbreviation or the the shortening of that turns it what into a the slur. Other one, the one that st- started uh, the second one there. I can't even say. It. Um... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't say that. No, no, because that's a slur. <laughs> that's, okay. You can't say that. Okay, how are you supposed to describe somebody from like 1991 with a jean jacket on? <laughs> If you can't say that. Okay. Um, last one here. I don't believe Caitlyn Jenner. And I think it's actually. A you wouldn't go to prison for that. No, that one. So I don't sure. think you would. Uh, say it again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe Caitlyn Jenner. When I wouldn't call. And I don't think. Yeah, that's fine. 
Interesting. That's fun. So we've got four definitely, one maybe, and one fine. So do you want to unbleep? Leave the last one unbleeped? Probably not. <laughs> Just to be safe, because <laughs> I'm not well versed in the law. <laughs> Unauthorized opinions. Thank you, Lewis Brackpool. Yeah. Um, we can't uncensor that, or else Lewis will go to jail. We do have a podcast that we had never aired from like two years ago or something. Oh, really? Yeah, if you recall. We didn't air an, a podcast because we were afraid you might get arrested. Oh, really? Well, I didn't say... I don't think I said anything. I disavow everything this man has said, so... Uopod.com, patreon.com slash uopod, Lewis Brackpool on Twitter, that's all it is, right? That's all it is, and Instagram. Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Check him out this week in hate speech uh, magazines everywhere. Yeah. Wherever those are published, Austria probably. Turn it up, Jordan.